If you were to ask me for my favorite underrated technology, it'd probably be 5G. Just kidding. It'd be e-ink, which is the primary display technology that drives most Kindles and ebook readers. Now, e-ink is not new. It's been around for several decades now. But that being said, it's never really made it into the mainstream in any products other than ebook readers. There's been a couple niche products here and there with phones, tablets, and even laptops integrating e-ink displays, but they've never been made by the big time manufacturers and they've never really made it to the most popular products that you and I have in our pocket. And that's kind of sad considering e-ink is well known for being incredibly power light, meaning that a e-ink display doesn't take a lot of battery and so therefore can last long periods of time. This is why Kindles and ebook readers can last weeks or even months on end without having to recharge. For years now, I've been wanting a dedicated Android tablet with an e-ink display, and that's exactly what I have here. This is an Onyx Books Poke 3, which has Android 10 on it, and it can run any Android application with the Google Play Store, which is super intriguing for me. So after the last couple weeks, does it solve all my problems? Let's talk about it. This is Sinoiso, and this is the Onyx Books Poke 3 review. Let's start with the problem that I was trying to solve. I love my Kindle because it's a great device for reading books, but once I try and branch out outside of that, there's not a lot of optionality, mostly because it doesn't have access to something like the Play Store. And then even within reading books, I already have EPUB, EPUB books that I bought from other marketplaces that are tough, if not impossible, to route to the Kindle marketplace to read on my Kindle. Yes, there are end around ways, but they're not really all that above board. So really I'm stuck buying books directly from Amazon. Then on the flip side, I love my Android tablet because it can do just about anything and could read just about anything. But I don't really like the way that OLEDs and LCDs feel on my eyes for long periods of time. My eyes can get quickly fatigued if I'm reading in bright OLED and dark lighting. Then in addition to that, the battery life on Android tablets can be significantly worse than a Kindle. That's why the Onyx Books Poke 3 was supposed to be the perfect in-between for me. And so I've been using it for the past couple weeks. Let's start with the design. This is a good feeling premium design that probably rivals most Kindles. Yes, it is technically plastic, but it's a nice plastic, even if it does attract a couple fingerprints. And then on the front side, you have an actual pane of glass protecting the screen, which is not all that common among most e-readers. Most e-readers instead have plastic displays. Now one downside of the glass display is there's a little bit more glare than you'd get on mini, which is a little bit frustrating at times, but it's nice to know that my e-reader is protected if I scratch against it or put it in a bag with some keys. There's only one button, which is the lock button. There's not even volume controls, which is a little bit disappointing for me because I would love to be able to switch pages by just flipping the volume controls, but it's a small gripe. Then, once you actually get to the display itself, this is the highest density, or at least the best looking display that I've seen on any ebook reader before. It is very, very nice to look at and to read anything on it. There is a dedicated backlight. Actually, there's a warm and a cold backlight that you can tweak to your liking so you can match the room's warmth and to make it look more like you're reading on real paper. Where it gets interesting is in the software, which is one of the most unique builds of Android that I've ever seen. It does run on Android 10 and you can download the Play Store, which is just the experience that you expect. You can download any application you want. But then the front page is unique in itself. Yes, you can access apps, but you can also access your library or a dedicated store. And then where it gets really awesome is in the display settings. In addition to just tweaking the brightness of the display, you can also tweak the refresh rate of the display. So it's tailored more towards watching movies or scrolling through pages or reading which means that it will change the amount and frequency of the refresh rate and how much of the page is refreshed at any time. I wanted this to be really cool, but in practice, it's a little bit disappointing. Now you can set custom, ref custom refresh rates and settings for each dedicated app. And so the more you get used to it, the more likely it will be tailored for your use. But unfortunately, when you actually start using it, you'll realize that any sort of video or even scrolling through anything on this screen is a nightmare. It is a very, very bad experience. It looks very, very patchy. And while I wouldn't ever watch a video on it, even scrolling through web pages to read articles is too frustrating to actually do. 
And I found myself just opting for my phone, even if it wasn't a better reading experience for me. Now with the Play Store comes just about any application that you could dream of. So I downloaded YouTube and Spotify and several other more listening based apps. So while watching the YouTube videos weren't all that great, actually listening to YouTube videos in the background with YouTube Premium was a great experience with Bluetooth earbuds because there's no dedicated speaker. It was nice to set this by my bed and set my phone far, far away. So this was the last device and the only device that I could use before bed. Then I could relax my brain and not, you know, have too active of an experience browsing through Twitter or Instagram or TikTok before bed. Instead, I would listen to audiobooks or listen to soft, long YouTube videos or read my books. So then when it comes to reading, how does this compare to using a Kindle? Well, I had hoped that this would completely solve the problem of being locked into just Kindle based books, but unfortunately it doesn't really get me there because do, I do have older EPUB books that can be read on EPUB readers that you could find on the Play Store. But outside of that, if I download new books from say my local library, they all come in a dedicated locked Adobe format that is only readable on certain applications. And I only found two applications that could successfully read them. Both of them had very, very limited selection when it comes to text size, margin size, and the font type. The result was my reading experience actually became significantly worse switching to this than my Kindle. The dedicated Kindle app can read Kindle books on this, but the margins and text font size are a lot more restrictive. And so it often feels like I was reading on a lot smaller screen relative to a similarly sized Kindle. All in all, reading on this was a lot worse experience than I had hoped for. And I really found myself just wanting to go back to a normal Kindle. And it shouldn't be that way. Now I perfectly understand any sort of authors or publishers wanting to be able to properly sell their books and not have to deal with piracy between people. So I understand having to lock down books that are not easily shareable like it is with EPUB, but I had hoped that there were more applications that allowed me to read these books other than dedicated Adobe applications and OverDrive. OverDrive is a great library-based application that doesn't have really a lot of flexibility when it comes to the e-reader. Now it's not all bad, right? Obviously I am upgrading from the experience of using an Android tablet because the battery life should be a lot better because it's using an e-ink display, but that wasn't the case. Unfortunately, I found that the battery on this didn't last too much longer than most of my Android or iPad tablets. They, it unfortunately has enough backgrounds, downloads, or things happening in the background or connection to the internet to really cut into the battery so that I could typically only use it for four to five hours of active reading or listening before it started to get ticked down. And the problem was charging it for whatever reason was a lot slower than any other device that I've used in the last five years. And so I would put it on a charger and expect it to be topped up in an hour or so, and it was only 10 or 20% higher. Now, sadly, the worst part of it was in the performance. The Snapdragon 636 is not a bad chip, and it ran very well on many mid-range phones a couple years ago. But unfortunately, whatever for whatever reason, it doesn't really perform all that well here. It could be optimization, or it could be just that the display is that slow. But for example, I never really got any sort of confidence or confirmation when I had a gesture in mind. For example, if I swipe down from the top, I don't know if it recognized that swipe as, a note, as me trying to get down the notification bar. It doesn't look like it did. And so if I swipe down again, there it is. It's very unclear. And so what might end up helping is either a faster touch polling to be done on this device. So it actually registers your touch more often, or maybe a vibration motor that could actually vibrate every single time it feels a interaction. This might go a long way to remind me that I'm actually dealing with just a slow screen and not with a display that can't even feel when my fingers swipe against it. All of this culminates in an over $200 starting price, which is honestly a little too steep for the experience here. $200 isn't really that much money when you're talking about any sort of high-end tablet, but mid-range tablets can be accessed at around that price point. 
and they're probably going to give you a better display, a bigger display, and a better performance experience than what I got here. Sure, like I said, I'd probably prefer the e-ink experience of reading over the dedicated OLED or LCD. But outside of that, if the experience is something like this, then I'm probably going to have to switch back to a dedicated tablet. That's or have to go back to my Kindle. Thank you for watching InnoISO. I hope you like this kind of side review of the Onyx Books Poke 3. It was a fun device to use and I had hoped that I'd be able to kind of refresh my knowledge and my experience with some very, very different technology. But unfortunately, this really came short of expectations. Are you better with just reading tablets and you're fine with it? Or do you have a dedicated Kindle when it comes to reading? Or do you not read at all? Let me know down in the comments. If you like this video, please like and get subscribed and I will catch you in the next one.